good evening sir uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen welcome to this final session of uh, the cyber security conference that we have been uh, attending for last two days and we now come to the final and the most significant session of this particular conference uh, as you are all aware this is the session where we are going to have the india foundation and i i ict cyber security dialogue this is basically a conversation between the cyber security leaders of the two countries uh, that is lieutenant general rajesh pant who is the national cyber security coordinator at prime minister's office government of india and mr yugal unna director general israel national cyber directorate uh, but before i hand it over to them i'll just briefly uh, give a short cv of the two speakers uh, general pant uh, serves as the national cyber security coordinator at pm's office government of india he has more than 42 years of experience in the indian army in addition general pant is an internationally renowned scholar who has vast expertise in the field of electronic warfare geo intelligence and cyber warfare mr yugal unna serves as the director general of the israel national cyber directorate since 2018 in 1995 he has recruited by the israel security agency where he held in a senior series of senior management positions after 22 years of service within the israel security agency mr unna joined the national cyber directorate where he is tasked with setting up the national cyber bureau's cyber technology unit as well as leading it until his appointment as head of the unified directorate in this particular session i will request the two speakers to speak for about 15 to 20 minutes each and then uh, we will open it for uh, q and a comments uh, so in keeping with the format i'll first request uh, general rajesh pant to speak for next 15 minutes or so and then followed by mr yugal unna over to you sir uh, thank you captain alok if i am audible please raise your hand you are audible sir okay so uh, greetings of the day to yeah hello yugal hello hi so, hello everybody. hello hello You are in a more relaxed dress than I am, which is not fair. It's 9 p.m. here. <laughs> What's the day? Yeah. So uh, greetings of the day to everyone wherever you are, and thanks to India Foundation and the International Institute for uh, Counterterrorism for uh, having both of us here. Uh, nice to see you, Gail Ona, the DG of uh, INCD. Last we met was I think in the virtual. A global cyber cabinet uh, during the Israeli Cyber Week, and the last we met physically was last year in the Israel Cyber Week, and we are all aware of the uh, good work that he is doing and the challenges that he is facing, 24 by 7 by 365. India also is one of the most attacked countries in the world, as you know, and uh, let me start by uh, talking of the changing nature of uh, cyberspace. You see, unlike land, air, and sea. where uh, these spaces are defined by land borders and territorial waters and even air space and i must share with the audience because it's a very relaxed mood now as to uh, how i learned that air space was also shared was last time when i was returning from israel after the israel cyber week uh, my flight uh, to uh, delhi was at 10 pm in the night from tel aviv and we had a series of meetings throughout the day and when the flight took off i called the air hostess and requested her for a drink and she said sorry sir you can't have a drink because we are flying over saudi arabia and next drink will only be after 3 hours so then i realized that the, even in the air space you know there is sovereignty so what i'm trying to say is that cyber space is one that is expanding on a daily basis see today there are 4 and a half billion internet connected users another 3 billion to go 17 billion iot devices they say in the next 3 years is going to be 30 billion iot so the space is expanding it is borderless the attack surface is going to become much much bigger and for yigal and me it's going to become very very serious because what i'm finding is that with the 5g rollout that is taking place uh, you know the m to m will start the iot devices will get connected and the machine to machine communications will take place so just imagine how expanded the attack surface will be and when i talk of machine to machine for me an iot device is basically a cyber physical system 
you know it has a sensor it has a processor it has an actuator and it has a communicator and if i am able to hack uh, this cyber physical system then i can create a lot of problems from everything from a camera to a you know a guided uh, vehicle a self driven vehicle to an air aircraft so it's not a it issue anymore it's it's now with industry 4.0 it's a ot issue also and cyber physical system also so the first point i want to make is that the cyber space is changing at a very rapid pace cyber physical systems are coming in machine to machine communications are happening and as if that was not enough the pandemic has now created the work from home environment the online environment because of which the you know the entire online data processing has gone up and i can give you the example of our government uh, uh, national informatics center uh, we were handling about 20 million emails per day and today we are handling about 80 million uh, emails per day in the government sector so it's a three and a half to four times rise in the use of online by the government and cyber crime as you all know has gone up by 500% etc so the cyber space the changing nature of cyber space both in terms of the attack surface as well as its uh, details are are you know definitely worrying now uh, the recent case of uh, fire eye uh, company also all of you are aware that uh, you know these attackers are getting more and more smarter they are always one step ahead let me assure you that the attackers are always one step ahead and uh, you see what they did in the fire eye case in the recent case they stole the tools from that company and then used it against the us government and then there are cases uh, you know that in this particular case also the malware uh, became active after two weeks right so you have these obfuscation malware and all these things and in india recently uh, uh, there's a news item that i read about, uh, the other day about uh, 7 crore uh, details uh, being uh, on the web uh, sold on the web and uh, uh, the haldiram is getting attacked and dr reddy getting attacked so uh, just give me a tactical pause here because two of my dogs have just entered the room so let me uh, hand over back to jigal and i'll i'll come back to you thank you i'm just switching on my yes well jigal uh... i'll request uh, mr jigal unna to uh, make his comments now thank you sir. yeah well uh, uh, thank you general pant and and uh, and uh, both professor ganor and all the, the rest of the uh, friends old friends and new friends i see uh, uh, in the screenshots uh, well uh, i'm i'm totally agree with with the, what the uh, general pant just uh, mentioned and i will elaborate on that because i i'll, I'll begin with the uh, quoting a, a journalist uh, one uh, major journalist of uh, the israel press that uh, uh, called me yesterday uh, in the middle of the the Hanukkah holiday that we are now having here we are not feeling any uh, holiday atmosphere here in the in this at least in the cyber directorate uh, and uh, he told me that a uh, quote we feel here in the in the editorial uh, floor that uh, we uh, we're in the middle of a, a world war 3 regarding cyber and that is because of 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 a series of of uh, news about in, in the israel insurance company that was hit two weeks ago and still ongoing uh, leaking of of uh, personal details and then on the last weekend we we have a big uh, issue about a uh, supply chain to all the uh, the uh, customs and and the uh, uh, import export uh, it companies that the supply chain uh, that gives them the the software was hit not yet a damage but uh, we we managed to detect it in advance but it leaked to the news and a lot of fuss and then the google uh, thing which is probably a malfunction and not a cyber attack globally happened and then the solar winds and the fire eye etc etc and the psychological impact and that's what we are gathered to to talk about the, the terror the, the the what is the actual impact on this news on this series of of different pieces 
unrelated completely, but the aggregated impact is something that people uh, fear to open the, the computers. And I get uh, from my family and from friends and from my boss, the Prime Minister of Israel and others, is it safe to work? Yes, it is safe to work, but get used to the new era, as General Alpan mentioned. We are all connected. It's going to get even better on, the, on the, the opportunity side, on the bright side of digitalization and modernization. I came back last week from uh, Dubai. And they uh, hosted me there. They showed me the Dubai police, took me to an a, a automatic autonomous police station. Uh, they call it SPS. Uh, 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 it's, it's completely without human beings uh, located there. They have 11 like this all spread around uh, Dubai. And you can enter as a civilian and get all the services that a, a, a modern police can give without speaking to human beings, just with a, a, a digital and, 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 and sophisticated AI measures and others. And that's how our, uh, not future, this is how present looks like and the future is gonna look uh, even even more. Now, the, the such a, of, of a mankind and such of, of, of a, a new phase of, of human beings is just a, a, a asking for the dark side to come over and to try to interfere, to a, a, a do whatever, bad people, the 2% or whatever, Professor Gano can tell exactly that they, of, of uh, uh, people with bad means uh, want to do, now they have much more opportunity. They don't need to be physically where they, they want or need. They can do it remotely, anonymously, uh, behind proxies, much more and more than ever uh, before in history uh, of, of mankind. And my, my mission was to relax and comfort and to, to, to uh, put the adrenaline down to the, this specific journalist with the third world war, God forbid, what happened. And, and to make sure that we manage also, if not more than others, the psychological uh, aspect of the new era of digitalization that have also the dark side, the abuse, this kind of attacks that we're gonna, we're gonna face more before it will uh, get to a level that we can live with that. We still can live with that, but the, the impact and the noise is too loud and we need to do more to minimize the impact, not just on the, on the actual damage of leaking information, of, of causing uh, 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 malfunctions or, or uh, uh, disruptions to the uh, continuous of, of the critical processes, but also, and if not more than others, with the psychological and understanding. That's uh, where we stand now in the middle of too many crises all around. So uh, let me just take off from uh, where uh, Yigal uh, ended on the third world war that he mentioned. I'm sure there are more good people in the world than the evil ones. And uh, with that philosophy, if you recall, in all our global cyber cabinets, uh, whether it was with your uh, organization or in the recent Singapore Cyber Week or in the Prague conference, I have always been insisting that cybersecurity is an international team sport. And if we have to beat the criminals, then we have to understand that we have to collaborate with like-minded uh, democratic countries, if I may add that, in order to find the attribution. So in all the meetings, I have been stressing on attribution because the criminals, as you're aware, are coming through a couple of hops. And uh, if you come to Delhi and I'll take you to our National Informatics Center, where we have a huge security operations center with a global map, and 40% of the attacks you find are coming from the US. And the reason you and I know is because the last IP, which is being shown, is basically an Amazon web server virtual machine that has been hired. Uh, that is the last of those four or five hops. So, uh, you know, they come from countries 
where they know that privacy is respected. That is where the democracies come in. Because in the US, if you recall, even when that uh, Boston Marathon case took place, the iPhone people did not reveal the details. I mean, they had to come to you for help. And uh, of course, this is unofficial. But uh, uh, the point is that uh, democratic countries lay a lot of stress on privacy. So they take advantage of that, hire the machines there, and then come from there. So uh, in order to beat them, uh, you know, the MLAT, the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty, uh, does not seem to be working. Uh, the uh, uh, letter of rogatory, the judicial process, uh, does not seem to be working. So we have to find a solution. And uh, you and I are also aware that in the UNGGE, the 11 norms, uh, non-binding norms that uh, we had created after 10 to 15 years of uh, hard work and uh, come to some sort of uh, understanding, even that is not being respected because the fifth UNGG, as you know, could not come to a consensus. And the sixth uh, UNGG, again, we are finding the East uh, and the Western lobbies uh, are active. And as if that was not enough, uh, the, uh, the Chinese have now applied for the new IP. So uh, I'm sure the participants of this webinar would be aware that uh, the Chinese have applied for a new internet protocol to the International Telecommunications Union, that is the UN body, ITU. And uh, that is a decentralized sort of a structure that they are proposing. And they have backed it up with what is called the GIDS, the Global Initiative on Data Security, and also uh, come out with some data protection laws. So the situation is now getting serious, and this is what is being referred to as the splinter net. And if that happens, then attribution will, I can assure you, become more difficult, besides the other things. I'm not talking of global trade. I'm not talking of education, research and development, uh, trade, uh, social media, all that will get affected. But uh, attribution uh, will become more difficult because between the two nets, there will definitely be some points of interconnect. And the, uh, the hackers will come through these points of interconnect. You and I will not be able to uh, find out. And then they will, you know, it's like two worlds and this army is coming or the special squad is coming, attacking and then going back and then they disappear. So this is another serious issue, you know, the lack of uh, uh, international collaboration, the uh, lack of problems in attribution and the future, uh, which uh, I hope it doesn't happen because I don't like this word, uh, deglobalization. But then there are... Uh, uh, very strong indicators of it happening uh, the way things are taking place so this is this is uh, uh, you know one of the things that at the g2g level and uh, in the discussion that i have with uh, my friends like uh, yiga luna we always uh, keep uh, discussing as to what are the solutions uh, that uh, we can do for the attribution part uh, finally you know there has to be a whole of nation approach as far as the nation is concerned uh, to tackle cyber security it has to be a whole of nation approach. Everyone is responsible uh, for the cybersecurity of the nation because that's the way the attacks come. You know, they send a mail to just one person. A human being is the weakest link. And from there, there's a lateral spread and escalation of privileges. And then, you know, they get those rights and then they strike at the right moment. So individual has a responsibility. Government has a responsibility. Academia has a responsibility. R&D has a responsibility. Uh, business has a responsibility. All of us are responsible at different levels and at different scale to ensure cyber security of the nation. So, uh, uh, of course, our strategy is uh, coming out very soon. But uh, this is, uh, you know, we have to think of some proactive actions. And this is where uh, we look forward to our friends from uh, Israel because uh, they have the cutting edge uh, of uh, technology in uh, cyber security. And I've uh, seen some of it. So, uh, that, that is, you know, the sort of cooperation that we look forward. And uh, I now uh, await comments of uh, Yugal and uh, Alok Bansal on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Yugal, uh, would you like to respond to some of these questions, uh, comments which he has made? Uh, uh, yes, shortly. Uh, um... Well, uh, General Pant and me, we, we, as, as he mentioned, we, we share a lot of, of uh, discussions uh, with like-minded in, in the closed circles. And uh, one thing is, is uh, imminent and very clear that uh, uh, no one, not a single agency, 
not inside Israel, which is much, much uh, smaller than uh, big India, and not even one agency in India, and not in one country, not a single country, can really deal with this new plague, a uh, new pandemic by itself. We must, uh, it's not a nice to have, it's, it's a must have of partnership and working together from all levels, from uh, beginning with sharing information on the basic TTPs and IOCs and all the technical uh, raw data that need to, to, to be shared in order to, to face the same attacks that behave pandemically. So it's, it's hitting here in India uh, probably at the same time or, or very short uh, time uh, uh, elements. But uh, also with the counter uh, counterattacks and, and the deterrence and pushing back the attackers, uh, uh, as, as, as mentioned. Now, the, the UN and the uh, traditional diplomacy, uh, and uh, as you may suspect, I'm not a professional diplomat, and not uh, related to this, but I work a lot of years with, with the diplomacy. The traditional tools are unfortunately less uh, efficient, uh, if at all, in this case, because of basically, as General Punk mentioned, the, the, the attribution issues, the, the deniability of the attackers, the, the proxies and, and curtains behind curtains behind curtains that the, the perpetrators can hide uh, behind. And uh, uh, so uh, there is the, the uh, uh, GGE, there's the open ended, now called never ended uh, working group in the UN now they, they postponed it for another five years, if I'm not uh, mistaken, General Pant. Uh, uh, it's, it's a process to the, to the, uh, on behalf of the process, not really to get into to real results and uh, tangible practical measures. So we began in the global cyber cabinet and, and bilaterally we, between the like-minded countries to, to uh, discuss on more practical measures to build to, to, to make higher walls and fences and push back the too easy to perpetrate attacks today. You can really go uh, and, and uh, unlike in the drug uh, dealing money that you cannot enter a bank in a like-minded normal modern country with a, with a suitcase full of, of a, a dollar bills and just put uh, open an account and say, okay, put it on the account under John Smith and that's okay. No, there's a know your client processes, uh, questions are asked uh, and uh, more uh, transparency is, is needed too. It's not complete, it's not hermetic, but it's much more difficult. We want to adopt that to the uh, uh, cyber security, meaning that you cannot uh, uh, buy a virtual machine or hosting services or servers in a, a third party country to perpetrate your attack without any question asked, a forms to be, be filled, something that will make the life of the, at least the common perpetrator, much harder and push back and, and make the, 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 the attacker's life more difficult and less easy to, to, to run and uh, run pandemic attacks. We need uh, to, to take uh, systems like the cybernet. We have in Israel a, a closed circuit. More than 2,000 uh, entities, government, public, private sector entities that connected 24 seven to a very high secured uh, system that we run. Very simple, by the way. It's a Facebook for cybersecurity that we can immediately share. And by the way, in the recent events that we, we now face in the past two weeks or three weeks, it, it uh, proven to be number one tool to cyber secure Israel because we find the, the details, the IOCs, the, the specifics of the attacks very shortly after the, we have the first signs and we can push it to 2000 CISOs and cyber security officers all around Israel, major entities in a split second and get results and get uh, uh, hits or get uh, uh, enrichment of this uh, 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 raw data and immediately see where we have more hits and more uh, targets. That's how we found the, the, the Amital, the, the customs services uh, agency that was hit as a supply chain to more than 80 other entities 
very easily, very shortly before the perpetrators manage to, to attack. Now we need to adopt that to larger global scale, bilateral, multilateral between countries. And that's how simple it is to, to really to, to uh, improve our life, just sharing, just with partnership, just with removing the traditional obstacles of uh, protocols and, and uh, uh, how to share uh, intelligence. It's not, intel it's not the traditional intelligence. It's not the usual classified intelligence. Sometimes it is, but most of it, it's unclassified that it can be easily uh, transferred and broadcast to, to uh, wider parties and vice versa. Now, today we're not just in, in, in a good, uh, excellent relations with India and the India cert, but we also with the other 89 countries, more than 89 countries. Uh, recently, we uh, lift the curtain uh, with our relations with the, the Gulf, uh, uh, with the UAE and uh, Bahrain, and now with the others. Uh, along the way, but we work with everyone that share the same problem. And in fact, we all share the same problems, not from just state sponsored, but from more and more radical groups, a, a cyber crime that uh, a develop more a, a greed, not just for money, but for influence. And now I'll, I'll, I'll give that example for just for to, to, to summarize. The attack on the insurance company in Israel is a, a, not a first of kind, but a very loud example of something that happens more and more in the, since the COVID-19 erupted. Now, a, a cybercrime groups that basically just, they, they're there for the money. Yes, they want to, to launch a ransomware just to, to get the, the money of the big uh, uh, entities, sometimes unfortunately for uh, even poor entities, and to, to squeeze their money. What they've done in the insurance company case is not just ransomware and, and the, we get your data, your personal data of your customers, give us money, otherwise we'll out it and, and leak it to the public. But they uh, enjoyed of the, the malicious and vicious side of it because we, we understood very, very fast that they are not just for the money because we offered them the money. The, the, the company offered them money and they still leak the, the information. They still enjoyed of, of uh, uh, making the, the, uh, the malicious uh, uh, fun of, uh, hey, look, we can uh, make life of uh, many people miserable. And that's the mixture between the uh, financial motivation and the malicious, vicious, maybe state-sponsored, but probably not, uh, uh, just to harm, to make damage is something that I fear that we're going to see more because it is there. It's possible. They can do both and get public. Now everyone knows the, their name, pay to key. Yes, who, who knew about them uh, two weeks or three weeks ago? So this is the basic uh, uh, sentiments and motivation of human beings. And unfortunately, now it transferred to much more uh, uh, dangerous, hazardous uh, environment of digital, of the internet. And that's where we need to run faster than them as governments, as, as a, a normal like-minded societies, and to get together and push them back. This is the, the critical, the money time. Uh, before I open uh, uh, the forum for questions, those wish, wishing to ask questions may raise hands or type them on the chat box. I have a question for both of you, which is a very simple question. With artificial intelligence, big data, cognitive networks coming into the play, has the problem of cybersecurity increased or has it become easier? Because these help you to solve the problems. At the same time, it also helps hackers and those it, intending to attack you make it more difficult. So I'll request General Pant and then Mr. Unna to kindly respond to this question, query. Yeah, I think that's a <clears throat> great question. Uh, it's very futuristic also. Uh, in my view, uh, it has uh, more benefit uh, than disadvantages, the use of AI and big data. And why I'm saying is because uh, a lot of behavioral analytics is uh, today being utilized. Uh, for example, in the work from home environment, one of the biggest issues is identity and access management because now it's a distributed sort of enterprise and people are working from different locations. So how do I confirm 
whether that person is actually whom he is and the application that he's using. So this is where AI is uh, giving us a lot of benefits that uh, considering his previous behavior, what is called as you know passive biometrics, etc. So uh, that, is, that is one aspect. As far as big data is concerned, again, uh, when you talk of uh, organizations like a national malware repository, for example, where today a lot of data is being received and you know millions and about 100 million odd uh, uh, samples and artifacts. So then extracting the genetic codes and trying, trying to find out, as Yugal says, the TTP uh, of the attackers, that is again where big data analytics helps. So in my view, I think both AI and big data are uh, giving us more benefits from the cybersecurity point of view than giving it uh, to the uh, attacker. Although the flip side is that, you know, he's also using AI tools to fool us, et cetera. But then, you know, I'm, ju I'm just giving you uh, both sides of it and which is, uh, since you asked, which is better than, in my view, their contribution to cybersecurity is more. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Onna. Yes. Uh, well, still the human element uh, is and will remain the, the, the main problem in cybersecurity. We're doing the mistakes. We're doing the... the uh, uh, the, uh, pushing the links that we shouldn't uh, push or press, we, we are doing, uh, we're choosing passwords that are too easy to, to guess. The problem that AI is a great tool to, to uh, push the, or, or uh, imitate the human behavior on steroids. So uh, if I need to, to uh, check for uh, vulnerabilities, it will take me much longer do it today in traditional technology when if I take AI and harness it, it will take sometimes something that takes weeks can take seconds. And AI can open more and more fields of, of imitating or understanding or replacing human behavior. And that is a, a very dangerous when you're talking about cybersecurity. Now, we do harness the AI also for a, a, the, the good side of, of a, Cybersecurity, finding the vulnerabilities very fast is, is uh, also works for the good guys to find the, the holes and the cracks and to, to close it. But uh, I'm too old in the business, uh, more than 30 years to, to, to have the uh, realistic approach uh, uh, that uh, any new technology is uh, first or faster abused than used. So I, I'm afraid that we're going to see uh, the abuse of AI and harnessing to, for, the, for bad motivation before we're going to see and enjoy uh, the benefits. But here I, I, I turn it to, to Professor Gano because I think that the academia and the IDC uh, should, uh, and I, I guess they already began on looking deeper into the, all the aspects of the full aspects, not just the, the cybersecurity, but the all aspects of, of uh, AI and uh, the, the dark side of it in all matters of, of what we call terror and abuse and, and uh, bad means. Uh, thank you. I think we had the benefit of uh, hearing Professor Ganor in past uh, session, but I'll still in request if you'd like to make an intervention and say something on this particular issue. Thank you, uh, Alok. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, General Pant and, of course, my friend uh, Igal Una uh, for uh, um, taking the time and, and share with us uh, uh, their thoughts. Uh, my, my understanding from, from those two brilliant uh, presentations is that, uh, like in counterterrorism, uh, there is a need to uh, move from uh, uh, the uh, individual efforts of every state or even bilateral cooperation to a multilateral cooperation uh, under the title uh, that it takes a network to beat a network. <clears throat> but uh, Igal, you, you, uh, you actually referred to uh, uh, what uh, ICT is, is doing and, and uh, it's interesting to see that today actually we held at ICT a very interesting uh, uh, red team exercise in which we played uh, uh, the role of ISIS uh, leadership sitting together 
and trying to see how can we use as ISIS leadership, uh, the uh, AI, uh, especially in reference to uh, deep fake uh, capabilities and how can we uh, uh, extend uh, our impact globally as ISIS by using uh, deep fake uh, together with kinetic and cyber uh, activity. We are in the midst of, of doing that, but even the first day of this uh, red team uh, uh, opened my eyes uh, uh, about the uh, future possibilities of the new brand of terrorists getting uh, deeper into the field of AI uh, and using the platform of cyber activity. I think that what you have mentioned, Igor, the fact that Israel has faced uh, this attack last week and uh, maybe first time we saw uh, 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 adversaries uh, that was not just interested in the profit, but actually was interested also in humiliating uh, the Israeli authorities, in embarrassing the Israeli authorities, that would be much more common when we will see more terrorist organization uh, using this platform in the future. And that's what I, uh, I believe uh, is going to happen. And uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm so happy that we had this ability uh, to, to work together with the India Foundation uh, on that important uh, gathering and to finalize that with these uh, two brilliant uh, presentations, which I believe is only the beginning of further cooperation uh, between our two institutes uh, on, on that matter. Thank you, Professor Gonor. Uh, we have two uh, raised hands, so I'll request uh, those who wish to ask questions. Firstly, Apuru Mishra, uh, please ask your question. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Apoor Mishra. I'm a senior research fellow at India Foundation. Thank you, Lieutenant General Pant and Mr. Runa for two wonderful presentations. I have two questions, and both of them are based on two phrases that Lieutenant General Pant used in his remarks. Uh, and I'm hoping both Mr. Unna and Lieutenant General Pant can respond to them. Uh, the first question is related to the phrase you used that uh, cybersecurity has to be a global team sport. Um, you know, and I want to bring you to the case of the WannaCry attack that happened some years back. I mean, public reports indicate that it happened from North Korean hackers. But uh, the interesting thing is that the most sophisticated part of that code was actually written by the NSA uh, of the United States government to pen, you know, penetrate Windows systems. And the North Koreans simply weaponized the code that the Americans had written. Um, so do you think that as a global community, we need to think about a digital non-proliferation treaty, which puts a limit on the kinds of cyber uh, weapons that countries can develop, just as you have a non-proliferation treaty for the nuclear uh, sphere. And the second question I have again, relates to a phrase that you used, uh, Lieutenant General Pant, and this is the, uh, the idea of a deglobalizing world. Uh, you know, just some years back, Russia tested its own uh, offline internet. I mean, uh, they, they, they call it the RUNET, but it's actually a, a domestic version of the internet that they want to sort of implement for, for their entire country. Um, currently, only authoritarian countries like you know, China and some countries like Russia are, are experimenting with these offline versions of the internet. Do you think that this is going to be the future of the cyber world in, in the decades to come? And is it desirable? And if no, then what can free societies like India and Israel do to prevent uh, you know, countries from developing their own domestic versions of the internet? Thank you. So you could take on both, uh, maybe first General Pant and then maybe Mr. Rumi. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Apur. I think both questions are absolutely great. And <clears throat> one thing I've learned is not to use phrases because you said you used <clears throat> both of my phrases and asked the question. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. As far as, uh, you know, the WannaCry and its use by the NSA is concerned, um, uh, we have also been uh, pitching for a digital United Nations, actually, uh, in, in some forum. You know, India has always adopted a multi-stakeholder uh, approach, uh, preferably UN-led. So uh, that is what we are pitching, although it is uh, becoming difficult to achieve with what we are seeing in the United Nations, which is why regional cooperations are coming up uh, like the Budapest Convention and you know some other uh, 
uh, corporations are coming up as far as the cyber crime is concerned. But uh, there is definitely a need, and that is what the UNGG norms, if you see those 11 norms, you will find some of them have a similar language to what you are saying that, you know, countries should not use their uh, cyberspace for launching attacks, and there should be responsible ICT behavior, etc. So all those had uh, uh, basically uh, given the same sort of idea, but definitely the need is there. Uh, uh, but what I said earlier uh, about the uh, splinter net, etc., and which is what uh, is leading to the second question. Now, as far as the dot uh, uh, RU that uh, was practiced by Russia, uh, I would say that uh, it is a case of contingency planning. That in case the internet pipes are cut, uh, let's say there's a there's a fault in the submarine cable, for example. Uh, it, it it may not be a deliberate fault. Uh, but in case that happens, then the entire business which is run on the internet, you know, uh, if you study the architecture of the internet, there are root servers and there are root instances. So a lot of the copying of the data takes place. So for about a week or so, we can handle it in India if, if, the, if the pipes are cut. But what happens after that? So there is an architecture methodology where actually you crudely say, you know, you twist the pipes back from inside and then have some more instances and backup and stuff like that. I think there's no harm in uh, countries practicing that as a contingency measure. Um, uh, of course, China is a different story altogether because you know, everything is behind a firewall, etc. But uh, the, what the Russians did, and uh, in fact, let me share with you, even we are uh, seriously thinking of conducting some sort of exercise that in case something happens at our internet gateways, then how do we continue to function? So uh, there is a, there is no deglobalization in that. I would say it is more of contingency planning. Mr. Unna, please. Yes, thanks. Uh, two good, very good questions. Uh, first, if we talk about WannaCry, uh, one thing that uh, is still not uh, clear enough to the public and not even to decision makers is the new nature of the nature of the new uh, uh, weapon that is called cybersecurity. Cyber weapon is a, a letters and numbers. It's, it's a language, human understood language, that is a code that can cause really a, a disaster, a disastrous uh, damage. Now, if we take a look at, at the human history, we had spears and arrows, very simple weapons that uh, cause very simple uh, damage at the end, very uh, minimized. Then we had the, the utmost weapon, nuclear weapon, that can cause a devastating damage, but is very hard to get and to develop, and very few uh, countries uh, are, at least publicly, uh, say they, they achieve that. And then you have cyber weapons. Cyber weapons are very easy. Again, letters and numbers. Uh, write a, writing a code, that, that is the weapon. But it can cause the damage of a nuclear weapon, and even more. This uh, anomaly is something that is still, the, the, the mankind is still struggling with. It's not uh, uh, understood to the deepest elements of that. And a WannaCry attack is, is a great example. What happened there, attributed to by, you know, by press and others, it's NSA probably, a, a develop a weapon, the good guys, a good weapon to, to, uh, to get, to collect intelligence from the bad guys. And because it's at the end, letters and numbers, it's too easy to, uh, uh, first, when you, the bad guys are attacked, they can retrieve it and turn it to the, uh, against who launched it against them. That is impossible to do with kinetic uh, missiles and others. Or it leaks, what probably happened in, in the WannaCry case. It leaks because it's too easy to leak. You know, on SD, small uh, micro SD card, you can leak all, almost all the weaponry of, of uh, Israel, US, and India together. And this anomaly is something that we, we need to adapt or, or build a new paradigm, how to deal with, because this is the new age. Uh, youngsters, kids can, in the age of 12 or 13, can uh, develop it and run it and cause a damage that uh, platoons or battalions 
of, of uh, high skilled uh, 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 combatants cannot uh, do uh, with the traditional weapons. And it's a shift of, of paradigms and something that we're still struggling to, to understand it ourselves and to explain it to decision makers. Regarding the, the uh, uh, isolated internet islands, it's very easy, it won't work. The whole uh, concept of the internet of, of connectivity is about connectivity. Now, you can build uh, uh, firewalls, you can do uh, countermeasures that can make sure or try to make sure that only the right bits and bytes can uh, 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 walk through. But once you isolate yourself, like North Korea, you remain behind. You will be retarded and, and less developed and, and uh, way behind all the others because the, 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 global, the global elements, the, the, the mankind is now all about digitalization, which basically means how we flatten the world and make all the data, all the, the, the what we need to know, understand and to entertain and to trade Everything is around this network with zero and ones. Once you isolate yourself, you're out of the game, you will be extinct. So therefore the answer is, we, uh, uh, it's not a good idea, not even in, a, in our crisis uh, management programs. We used to have in recent years, the, the red button that uh, disconnect everything from everywhere. We say it's causing more damage than the actual uh, attack. So we removed it with these red buttons. No, no uh, uh, sense in doing that. You need to do other measures of minimizing the attack surface, of doing other things. But if you disconnect yourself, it's like saving your own life in a heart attack by choking yourself. It, it's, not, it's not a good idea. And I strongly recommend to leave it to less developed countries or societies and remain on how to make yourself more safe in a connected world. Uh, thank you. We have three more questions. Uh, I'll request Kedar Kulkarni uh, to ask his question. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Uh, for thank you, the panelists, eminent panelists. Uh, my question first, first of all, I'd like to thank Apurva. Uh, I had a similar question, but I'll carry forward from the point of deep fakes and the disinformation campaign, uh, which is the new hybrid warfare technique which we're talking about. Now, AI is making uh, it's very difficult to uh, distinguish between what is real and unreal. So how is the state uh, tackling this issue of these uh, massive disinformation campaign using deep fakes? And what should be the response uh, of common citizens and how do common citizens identify uh, such uh, very difficult deep fake uh, uh, news or articles which are floating or videos which are, thank you. With your permission, we'll take one more question and then Ayushi Ketka. Thank you, sir. Uh, as uh, mentioned by uh, Pantha, uh, I would like to know the response of both the speakers uh, because you hold very high positions and uh, you know that one of the biggest challenges that we face now is between data sovereignty and privacy. These seem to be two irreconcilable ends. How do free, free societies like India and Israel uh, deal with this challenge. Kindly share your experience in this regard. Thank you. I request both these answers uh, from you, Mr. Unna, first, and then General Pond, please. Well, uh, uh, how many days will, do we have uh, to the seminar? It's a pretty wide uh, questions, but I'll, I'll try to, to, to uh, summarize it. Uh, uh, regarding uh, deep fake and disinformation, uh, well, First of all, we must say it's not uh, completely cyber. Uh, when we talk about cyber security and, and uh, my jurisdiction, only if the uh, generator or the, 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 uh, what caused the, the uh, disinformation is hacking into a system or gaining unauthorized access is something that is uh, under my jurisdiction. Otherwise, if you just, you know, uh, uh, botnets in the Facebook or other places that are uh, legitimately or semi-legitimately are, are bought and used, it's not uh, really cyber. And this is one, one uh, problem. Uh, countries, at least Israel, maybe India is, is, is in a different place, General Pan will relate to that, but Israel is still struggling. What is the right 
alignment on the government, uh, law enforcement and other agencies side, how to tackle that. Because we, are, we don't want in a democratic society to be uh, judges of a content. We don't want to, to be uh, the one that say, okay, this content is legitimate and the other content is not. So what is fake? What is a, a deep fake and others? So we, we uh, uh, stick to more uh, clear uh, methodologies of uh, identifying where there's a manipulation, a technological manipulation in streaming, in video, in others. And their AI is really a, a great blessing of how to identify and how to, to uh, uh, detect the, the early signs of, of uh, this kind of, of uh, technology manipulation. But if it's not a technology manipulation, then we won't know. I, I, I suspect there's no other agency that they could know about, about that. So that's a big thing. And the answer is education. Uh, more uh, skepticism, more criticism by uh, 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 press and media consumers, which is all of us, to what we are, uh, uh, what they, they, they push and, and put on us, on, on, the, on the press, on the media, on the television. And that's a really a struggling and maybe the most uh, important disease in the 21st century that we need to, to deal. And I don't need to, to elaborate on what's happening on our, with the, our big friend in, in America regarding that. What is true, what is false? And now we're entering the, the vaccines, the COVID-19 vaccines era, and we are full of, of a, a fake here in Israel also. In fact, we inaugurated a government sub-unit uh, sub in the healthcare agency that deals only with counter-fake uh, publications regarding the vaccines. And that's crazy. Imagine that a year ago, two years ago, and we're going to struggle with that a lot. About the data sovereignty, we're really something that uh, I... I uh, Ask uh, uh, Professor Gano, maybe we, they, they can uh, uh, elaborate or do more academic research on that because we, we have ideas, we have a multi-agency uh, committee that we deal with the aspects of that. In fact, uh, we had last week, we had an international conference that uh, the Minister of Justice uh, uh, represented our, our view. Basically, we think that data is something that should be regarded as entity as almost as a physical element, like other physical elements that need to be taken care of in all aspects, even on, on war, uh, uh, war uh, legal uh, atmosphere or legal uh, boundaries. Uh, that's uh, the, the basically uh, what we're struggling. But we have debates and it's, it's a good debate because data and, and data sovereignty is the new sovereignty and we all need to take care of that in the coming years, if not months. Yeah, let me uh, <clears throat> start with uh, uh, Yushi's question on uh, data sovereignty, since Yigal was talking of that, just to provide the continuity. In India, uh, this whole uh, debate of uh, the personal data protection bill, uh, which is presently being discussed in parliament, etc., started off with the aspect of privacy where uh, about two years back, there was a Supreme Court decision that under Article 21 of the Constitution, privacy is a fundamental right. So once that was declared, then we came on to uh, the aspect of uh, sensitive and personal data and how it is to be protected. And based on that, there was a Justice Sri Krishna Committee report and that made, and then we made our draft, and that is a bill that is presently being discussed in Parliament. So uh, data sovereignty uh, and our bill is mostly aligned to the GDPR of Europe. All of you must be aware of the GDPR, which was introduced on 25th of May 2018 in Europe. And uh, over there, you find that uh, it has uh, led to a lot of success because earlier the companies were not reporting the breaches of data. Now in GDPR, Within 72 hours, you have to report, otherwise 20,000 euros or 4% of your revenue. You know. So this is what we need in India to protect our personal data. Of course, there are issues about cross-border free flow, et cetera, which has been discussed. But all this, we have, where have we learned this from? We've learned this from GDPR. We've learned this from the US. 
you are aware that the uh, leak of uh, 81 million accounts of facebook to cambridge analytica facebook was fined 5 billion dollars and they have paid also their annual revenue is 107 billion he's paid 5 billion to the federal trade commission of the us so in india yesterday uh, you all have read 7 crore uh, indians card data is being sold on the dark web etc and so many other cases are coming out that means in a sense we are losing the government is losing money because of the loss of data the individuals are losing money so this is the protection that we want to provide to the uh, public and uh, that is as far as the data sovereignty and the privacy is concerned uh, as far as the deep fake and disinformation is concerned that is that is a uh, it's it's a current uh, problem in uh, social media and the answer lies in uh, uh, using technology uh, for example uh, a lot of multi factor authentication uh, techniques have uh, come out recently i mentioned this earlier also as to uh, how uh, it is being ensured uh, about the identity of the person both based on location based on his behavior analytics etc uh, facebook for example has started a blue dot sort of a, uh, a concept so certain key individuals uh, uh, you know their tweets always come with a blue dot uh, they cannot be copied etc even twitter is uh, thinking of something like that so uh, we will have to find a answer as i said you know it's a battle of wits uh, going on it's a race um i think as yigal una was saying there are not too many days left in the seminar only 2 minutes are left so uh, i will hand it over back to <laughs> captain bansal we have 5 minutes left i'll just take one last question which wing commander sudhakaran has been wanting to ask for a long time i'll just ask him to quickly ask his question brief question to the point uh, sir good evening sir this is the question to lieutenant general uh, pan Uh, the question is with respect to spacex uh, program on the starlink uh, constellation wherein they are likely to deliver hailing internet uh, right now to north america and canada but then eventually the plan is to provide it throughout the world now this has got far reaching security consequence as well as economic consequence because the ground um, traffic from which you know there is a lot of uh, economic activity that are dependent on and the data security as well as the control of government in data traffic management all this have far reaching consequence for a system like this so what is the uh, plan of the government to uh, protect itself from uh, such a situation thank you uh, yeah sudhakar uh, you raised a very specific issue and i will request uh, if you can send a mail to me my Uh, email id is ncsc at gov dot in. Just send the details of this case to me. But having said that, uh, let me also uh, say that uh, in any system, we cannot uh, have hundred percent check on all the equipment. So generally, it's basically uh, risk analysis that we are doing. So uh, I will have to see in this particular system that you are talking of, which are the places where we have to have our roots of trust. where we where the data is actually being stored or you know the critical data and that definitely there can be no compromise on that that i assure you uh, and uh, you will hear something in weeks to come about what else we are doing in the government uh, but please uh, uh, send the details of this particular uh, starling case to me at ncsc@gov.in thank you thank you sir i think uh, this session has been extremely fascinating and i have I would like to thank both our eminent speakers for taking time out from their busy schedule to give us this one full hour where we could interact with them. We are really grateful to you. And with this session, uh, this wonderful conference which we have organized over a period of last two days comes to an end. And I'd like to thank ICT Harzliya for actually collaborating with us. And as we said, this is the beginning. We have a huge round of series of e events that we. plan to host with ICT Harzliya we have actually a collaboration which goes back number of years and we want to firm up this collaboration in days to come and i for that i am really grateful to professor bos ganor founder and executive director of ICT Harzliya to my friend stevi venberg the deputy executive director uh, daphne berry and as far as india foundation is concerned we are really grateful to mr ram madhav who, who has been the founder of india foundation as a member of board of governors and who attended this conference of course and my colleague uh, 
senior research fellow Soumya Chaturvedi for making this conference a great success. I am above all grateful to all the speakers who took out time out to speak on such specialized subjects and all the participants who took time out and stayed awake till late nights or got up early in Israel to log in for this conference. We are really grateful to all of you. Thank you so much. And I hope we have future events coming up where we collaborate more frequently. And thank you very much, sir. Once again, I thank all of you for taking time out and being with us. Thank you so much. Really grateful to you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank Jalal you very much. Hello. Hello. Namaskar. Hello. 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 Bye bye. Bye. Come to India soon. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Daphne. Thanks, TV. Thanks, Somia. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Alok. Thank you, Igal. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.